uh, KRAS and BRAF. I'm not an oncologist. Um, I run the molecular pathology lab, but as part of my response in the clinic, uh, we actually work closely with oncologists about end targets and things that we want to do. Oh, okay. So this is really an exciting time, uh, particularly for those of us that have done molecular for some time. It's really sort of a time of oncologic renaissance. There are thousands, not thousands, but there are thousands of drugs in the pipeline, but there are many drugs that have now been approved for clinical use, both clinically and in clinical trials. And actually what it's done is it's taken use of the molecular targets that we all study in the laboratory, but made them clinically relevant. So we're gonna talk a lot today about cell signaling and pathways, but that's very critical in understanding why we want to look for KRAS and BRAF mutations and what the new agents do as far as targeting those therapies. The good news is they're less toxic. So as many of you know or are familiar with the breast cancer world, drugs like Herceptin, which is targeted against the HER2 new receptor, there are other solid tumors that are now benefiting from this renaissance, and so we're actually having targeted therapies, and these targeted therapies cause much less side effects and less toxicity. And then lastly, which is kind of the new hot topic, and we're moving more and more that, day, that way every day, is sort of genetic profiling, profiling individual tumors, individual differences among all of us, and hopefully will help uh, improve our health care. So the big buzz is EGFR. Now HER2, as I mentioned in breast cancer, is also part of the EGFR family. But epidermal uh, growth factor receptor is a common target for many of the new oncologic drugs. It's a transmembrane receptor, and I'll show you in a second. It's a member of the ERB-B pathway, and it has to do with these receptor tyrosine kinases. So for those of you, has everybody heard of tyrosine kinases at some point? If you haven't, you will. It's like going to be like on the shelf like cereal because all the new drugs typically work through pathways related to tyrosine kinase receptors. So it's very important that we identify these and that's how these new drugs are able to target these ligands. So there are different ligands that, that form different receptors. The receptor forms a unit, a dimer. It becomes activated and then starts signaling pathways that create uh, cell division and expansion. So there's really two parts of the EGFR cascade, and I'll show you a schematic in a minute. But there's the PI3 kinase AKT pathway. This is more of an anti-apoptotic pathway. So what happens in these particular pathways is that the cells don't die. So kind of like in CLL, cells don't die, they expand. Then there's the RAS, which is the KRAS pathway, RAF and MAP kinase, and this has to do with transcription. So when these things kind of go awry, they continue to have an oncologic effect or an oncogenic effect to create growth and cell proliferation. What you really want in the, in the ideal situation for all, all uh, tumors is that both of these pathways operate effectively and that they actually can perform their biologic functions and pre prevent tumor growth and development. What happens as we age, just as an aside, is some of these pathways don't work as well as they used to, which is why, in general, cancer occurs more commonly in the elderly than it does in the younger population. So really, the ultimate goal of these uh, compounds and these molecules is that they really progress to cancer. The cells undergo some sort of change, genetic change, that allows them to have pro-division and pro-signaling pathways. They either do it through not dying, they either do it through progressing and activation, they do it by creating new blood vessels or neovascularization that allows the tumor to receive blood supplies that normally that it would shut down if it didn't. And then they can go through increased transcription, cell invasion, and eventually tumors form. And this is a very common theme through many of the solid tumors. So today we're focusing primarily on colorectal cancer, but I will tell you if you look at non-small cell lung cancer and some of the other similar pathways take over. So here come these signaling pathways that I, I would be remiss to talk about. And if y'all were my medical students, you would just lay your head down now and they hate looking at these, but it's very important that you understand the process. So here at the top, is that my, I don't know. Here at the top is the dimer. This is the EGFR receptor. It sits on the cell membrane. It's a transmembrane receptor. Ligand comes in, binds this, causes it to dimerize, and then kicks off the cell signaling pathway. This is a very normal process in everybody's cells. Here you have the RAS pathway, 
and then here's the anti-apoptotic PI3 kinase pathway. What happens when either of these processes are interrupted or mutated, then you get cell proliferation, cell survival, increased uh, signaling, and things that cause the tumor to form. So just to remind you, we're not talking about rare genetic diseases at this time. We're talking about a fairly common form of cancer. It's the third most common cancer in the world. Most, the median age of diagnosis is in your fifth or sixth decade. That's why screening colonoscopies are generally not um, recommended until you're 50, because normally they don't occur before that. But the estimated incidence is high enough that it creates a clinical problem for most of us in the laboratory and definitely for oncologists. What happens when this KRAS molecule is mutated or damaged is you get into the bottom category. It actually causes this GTP to GTP bound molecule that causes constitutive activation. Basically, the molecule is turned on constantly. It stays on. In the normal cell, it would actually shut off. You would have growth and proliferation. It would shut off. What happens in the mutated form of KRAS Actually, it doesn't shut off. It keeps on growing, and then the tumor is allowed to grow uncontrolled. Now, there are various forms of RAS, and it has been shown that really KRAS, there's another family in RAS, but KRAS is actually the tumor, the, the isoform of interest, and that's why we target clinically KRAS. And you can see that if you look at a normal specimen, a KRAS specimen, and then a mutated KRAS, you can see that the depth of growth and proliferation is significant. So what's the buzz? The buzz is these anti-EGFR oncologic drugs. They target this normal EGFR receptor. And what happened is, is it blocks the whole pathway. So as I told you earlier, when, when you have this model, basically the receptor, the drug comes in, blocks this, doesn't allow for activation and growth, and basically shuts down tumors that have this ligand on the surface and, and basically kills them and doesn't allow them to grow. Several new drugs have come on the market that actually target EGFR, and I'm sure you've heard many of them, Herbitux, Vectabix. And then I mention this because some of these drugs in lung cancer are also receiving quite a bit of national attention for things like Arisa and Tarceva, which also operate on some neovascularization factors. So they're commonly used drugs. They have pretty much replaced, for the most part, some of the traditional chemotherapies that we use in colorectal cancer. So just to remind you, this is the molecule of interest that these drugs target. You can either have the pro apoptotic or the activation, the oncogenic activation, and it causes increased survival. Other drugs, Vectabix, for example, Panitubumab, you can see in the graph, if you're wild type or unmutated normal KRAS, you respond. If you have mutated KRAS, you don't respond. So something about the mutation in KRAS doesn't allow the drug to bind at the cell surface to stop the activation process. So if you are a mutated KRAS individual, what you won't do is you won't respond to this drug. So it's really a waste of time and expenses. So because of all that, ASCO, and then followed by the National Comprehensive Cancer Network, has actually come into being to put labeling and recommendations for oncologists. Basically, the bottom line on both of these were as part of the normal workup in a patient with colorectal cancer, you need to be evaluated for your KRAS status, particularly if you're metastatic colorectal, because it's going to be a waste of time and money for you to receive any of these anti-EGFR drugs because you will not respond to EGFR in these situations. And what happened clinically is when these guidelines came out for community physicians and oncologists, all labs, like mine and including others, were required to actually, not required, but it was suggested by supply and demand that we start looking at KRAS mutations in our patients with colorectal cancer as part of an individualized therapy process before they were given these drugs. So these drugs were all relabeled as of 2009, and so now the recommendation is from the oncologist that all patients prior to taking these drugs be evaluated for their KRAS status. And if their KRAS mutated, then they do not respond to these drugs. And as you can see that recently also NCCN has adopted KRAS, and I'm not going to talk about it a lot today, but the second player is the BRAF. BRAF is the downstream target of KRAS. BRAF was added on as a second layer as far as being evaluated for KRAS mutations. If you look at all the other tumors, 
You can see that KRAS mutations are in a lot of tumors. There are now anti-BRAF inhibitors that work in the same manner as anti-EGFR. And so we're really looking at molecular targeted drugs. Lung, there was a recent article in CAP Today about non-small cell lung cancer. And then maybe we should start looking at KRAS also in the subdivision of patients with non-small cell lung. So even though we're focusing on, on colorectal because that's what the guidelines, I think lung and others, particularly things like melanoma and other tumors are also going to be equally of interest in looking for mutation status because these drugs all work the same way. Anybody have any questions?